Vader. One of the most beloved new characters introduced in the new Marvel Star Wars comics is the archaeologist, scoundrel, and all-around troublemaker Dr. Chili Afra. No other character has received the same amount of love from fans, and since her debut, she has starred in two separate series of her own. Perhaps the most amazing part about her success is that she worked as Darth Vader's personal assistant and lived to tell about it. Afra was created by writer Kirian Gillian and artist Salvador La Roca. First appearing in Darth Vader issue number three, where she broke into a secure facility on a quarantine world to commit a robbery. After carefully bypassing all of the defenses and security systems, she stole the triple zero personality matrix, downloading it onto a drive. Mere moments later, she tripped the alarm on her way out. Alarms blared and automated blasters rained down, laser fire as Afra sprinted down the facility's narrow corridors. Running for her life, she finally escaped the automated defenses only to find herself cornered by the facility's curator, Yutani Zane, accompanied by a squad of battle droids. Afra was about to be arrested when an Imperial TIE fighter landed and outstepped Darth Vader. His presence was in violation of the Empire's agreement, something Yutani pointed out. In response, he let his lightsaber speak for him. The Sith Lord had come for Dr. Afra and would not be denied. Aboard Afra's ship, the Archangel, the two spoke as Afra unlocked the encryption on the triple zero personality matrix. Vader explained that he recently fought against several droids. She had repurposed and was impressed. As such, he had tracked her down. For her part, Afra spoke in a rambling, giddy tone. When Vader addressed this, she explained her nervous chatter saying, there's something about tall, dark, and able to kill me guys that makes a girl nervous. The Sith Lord finally explained he needed private off the books assets to serve him hence why he sought her out. Afra was quite literally floored, involuntarily kneeling before him at the sheer weight of what he had just asked of her. She realized then that whatever her previous plans had been, this was her next mission, Vader, the Dark Lord of the Sith. She stood, transfixed, and looking directly up into his black mechanical mask, told him, you're what I've been looking for all my life. Then it was back to business. Vader needed to acquire a personal droid army. Afra knew just where to get one, as she had heard that on the planet Geonosis, there was a surviving Geonosian queen with her own droid foundry. The two traveled to the desert world, and as they prepared to enter the subterranean tunnels to find the queen, Afra asked if Vader had ever been there before. For a moment, he paused, and a memory struck him from a lifetime ago. When he and Padme had been in chains on Geonosis, awaiting their execution in a gladiatorial arena, and in what they thought would be their final moments, she had confessed her love for him. But that was another time. Vader commanded Afra to stop probing, to which she replied that she was an archaeologist and so was bound to dig into the past. Within the tunnels, the two found the last Geonosian queen, probably the last of her species. Her sole purpose with her society had been to lay eggs and produce more Geonosians, but she had been rendered sterile, and her people were wiped out, desperate to do what little she could. The queen fastened her lower body to the droid foundry, creating battle droids in place of the biological children she could no longer have. Vader leapt into the birthing chamber, ignited his lightsaber. With a single stroke, he severed the Geonosian queen from the machinery. She screamed, and then she begged, the Empire had destroyed Geonosis's past with its bombs, wiping out her species. All she asked was that they spare the planet's future. But Vader ignored her. He ripped the foundry free with the Force and used Aphra's ship, the Archangel, to haul it out of the tunnels. Back aboard ship, Aphra informed Vader that his droid army was being assembled and would be ready soon. Now that he had no need for her, she wanted to know if he was going to kill her. Immediately? or wait a while. Given her dangerous line of work, she accepted that she would never grow old. When Vader appeared, Aphra knew her time was about to run out, but at least she would get to die as part of a grand story, something bigger than herself. Her only request, if he allowed her one, was to be given a quick death with his lightsaber, and not to be thrown into the void of space. When she finished speaking, she stood wordlessly before the Sith Lord, staring up at his blank black mask. There was a moment of silence. And then the silence was broken, not by the buzz of a lightsaber, but by the mechanized rasp of Vader's voice. You have proven yourself resourceful. 
You are safe as long as I have use for you. But there was also a warning, that if she ever crossed him, her life was forfeit. She agreed, grateful for the chance to continue being part of this larger story. And that is how Dr. Aphra came to work for Darth Vader.